Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 161 of Sarah Nova Crafts. I'm your host, Jessica. I can be found as Sarah Nova on Ravelry and Twitter, and as Sarah Nova Crafts on Instagram. Hopefully I remember to do show notes for today. I was going to do show notes for the last episode, and then I didn't. I also forgot to insert a picture in the last episode, so there was a link in the in the um, description box in YouTube. Um, but anyways, thank you for watching. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, you know what this is like. Um, I am trying yet another filming location. I'm actually at work, but I'm not working. Um, I've been hosting a yarn fiber crafting group here at my synagogue, and um, everyone has left, and I'm taking a few minutes, because um, I don't start work until 1 o'clock, and it's like 11.30, um, so I'm just sitting in a conference room with fluorescent lighting, which is apparently not great. I tried to use a ring light on the um, camera to, like, front light my face a bit, but I don't think it's working the way it's supposed to. I'm actually going to move it, see if I can't make it a little, because see, I have this, I have this little ring light here, right? And so I'm trying to illuminate my face, but it needs to be, like, you know, here. <laughs> um, but it's a little bit of light, so I'll actually put it down there. Because I realize, I realize my eyes are, like, super in shadow. Like, it's super, like, you know, because I have fluorescent lights overhead, so it's not great. But, um, yeah. Uh, but today I've been bringing um, different crafting stuff to each, um, to each uh, uh, session just so that people could see like what um, like what I was working on and things like that. I was just adjusting the camera a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Things are moving and all that jazz. Um, and so like the last two weeks I was showing spinning and I actually still have my spindle here. Um, well, it got caught on the skein of yarn. That's always great. Come on, come off, come off. There we go. Um, so I have my spindle. I was teaching someone how to spindle spin, so I took this braid of fiber. I don't even remember what it is. Um, I've had this for ages and ages. Um, and by ages and ages, I mean like six years. <laughs> um, I don't even remember what it is. I do remember it's wool, but I don't remember what type of wool. Um, but I've had it for a very long time. At this point, I've had it for so long, it's actually slightly matted. Um, I can pull it up on Ravelry probably. Actually, I have my computer right here, so I'm going to pull it up on Ravelry real fast and see if I can't um, tell you what it is. Um, I am talking kind of quiet because, uh, uh, <laughs> because it's, uh, I'm in a room with just four walls and it's kind of echoey. Um, let's see, where is my fiber stash? On Rav, come on. I know I stashed this. Oh, so this is somebody who's no longer dying. Um, this is, uh, Zara Zuella Fibers. She's actually the woman who first taught me how to spindle spin. Um, I think she's gone out of business now. I don't think she's, I don't think she's, um, I don't think she's, she's dying anymore. Um, cause like her rat, her, um, Etsy closed. So, but I got this back in 2012. So it's actually, I've actually had this fiber for seven years. So, but this is the colorway darkening skies. It's a bluish purple. Um, it's BFL and, um, I'm spinning it on a top whirl spindle. This is a shacked spindle. You can see the shack logo on the underside of the whirl here. Um, but this is actually a reversible spindle, so it has the hook up top to do the top whirl, but it also has the notch in the bottom of the shaft, so you can do um, bottom whirl if you want. Um, I have been knitting a little bit. Um, I actually had to pull back. Uh, I have everything like on the floor around me in the conference room. My bags have like exploded. Um, I had did have to pull back on the... Um, on this, oh, I'm in the middle of the row. I had to pull back because I'd messed up a count. It had gotten really messed up. But so here is where I'm at on the Spitfire. And you can actually see it this time because I realized when I was editing last week's footage that um, the green screen didn't work. So I'm not going to do that again. I'm sorry I submitted y'all to that. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but so here it is. You can actually see it this time. It's coming out really nice. So that's where it started. I finished the increases here and I'm working on the main body. I'd messed up on the main body and I was actually up like here and I had to tink back. Because with brioche, you can't just rip, you have to tink. So you can see, I had to pull back to where I am. And of course, when I put it away, I put it away in the middle of a row like an idiot. But so, um, but so this is Spitfire. The Spitfire, it's on my Ravelry page, but if you give me a moment to pull out the pattern, I will tell you who designed it because I don't think I've mentioned that recently. So this is Spitfire by Carissa Browning. It takes um, two skeins of fingering, but so here it is. Here's the, here's the photo. That's her name. There you go. Here's the Spitfire. Um, supposed to be, and that's like the shape of it. I drew it out on the back so you can see it. See that? That's like the final shape. It's like a trapezoid. 
So, um, but I'm, but this is definitely a paid pattern. It is available on Ravelry, um, but I'm not going to hold it up for you guys to see because that's spoilers. And like I said, it's a paid pattern. Um, and so the other thing I've been, so the other thing I did, this is going to be a short episode, by the way, because um, other than the spinning and working on Spitfire, I haven't done too much. But today, when I came to the yarn craft group I'm doing at the synagogue, I actually brought my loom, which I haven't done in ages. If you go back on this, I got my loom in... I haven't woven since before I moved. So we moved the summer of 2014, so it's been almost two years since we moved. And I think the last time I wove anything was 2016? I think it was 2016. But by coming to this group and talking to these ladies, um, they're all very interested in all the different kinds of crafts I do. And because we're in a more um, private environment here, I feel more comfortable bringing something like a spinning wheel or my loom. Um, because like when I go to my Barnes and Noble group, not that I don't love going with those ladies and not that I don't love going there. I do. I adore those ladies. I love going. Um, but that's in a very public space. We're at a table at the cafe at Barnes and Noble. And... Um, you know, I don't necessarily feel comfortable taking up a huge section of the table with a loom or a huge section or more floor by bringing my spinning wheel. Um, so I tend to bring just like knitting or crochet to, um, to Barnes & Noble. But because here at the synagogue, you know, it's a little quieter. There's not as many like random people about. Um, I can, in fact, you know, I feel more comfortable bringing something like my spinning wheel or like my loom. So I, today I have my loom on a chair here because I have a shacked cricket. For those of you that don't know, I have a 15-inch Shacked Cricut, which is the wider one. Shacked makes two Cricuts. They have a 10-inch loom and a 15-inch. And I have the 15, which means I can weave wider things on it, is really all it boils down to. So um, I got some yarn, and I warped the loom. So here we are. I've warped the loom, so this is going to become a scarf. Um, and I've got some, um, got some started. So I'm just doing a basic plaid, just a basic stripe plaid, you know, so, um, you can see here, it's plaid-ish. I'm not going to say it's a true plaid. I'm going to say it's plaid-ish. And of course, the fabric, I'm, the paper I'm using in between had to unroll, so I'm sorry for all the crinkly noises. Crinkly, crinkly, crinkly. I'm putting that down now. So, um, so that's that. <laughs> Sorry for the random noises on the paper and da-da-da-da. Um, I put paper in between the layers, kind of like a jelly roll kind of thing, because that keeps a more even tension on the um, on the weave as you work it on the loom. So, But this is something that I can like actually sit on the couch and do, because, I mean, it's technically a lap loom, but we have a chaise on the couch, so I'll sit like cross-legged, and then I'll put the loom in front of me, and then I'll be doing that. So, um, oh, I need some water. <laughs> So I've been working on stuff, but kind of piecemeal, so I don't have a lot of progress on a lot of different things to show you. Um, unfortunately, like, I just, I just haven't been. So I feel like, you know, I'll get there eventually and that, um, you know, there'll be more progress and longer episodes. I'll probably have more time to work on stuff over the summer, but that's also like, wait a minute, I'm getting married in September. <laughs> so, like, okay... Uh, am I really gonna have time to do stuff? I don't know. So, like, really, it's a complete crapshoot whether I'm gonna get, actually get more done over the summer or not. But, hey, I'm actually, um, I'm actually, like, about a week out from my last episode. So, hey, I consider that a, um, I consider that progress. I'm hoping to be, um, a, once a week again, maybe, if I, like, take this time on Thursdays between like the yarn craft group and when I work. Um, that'll be interesting, but we'll see. Um, but, oh, and some other news. Um, I'm going to be working the 100 Ravens booth in July at a um, crochet, crochet show in Manchester, New Hampshire. That's, um, shoot, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to remember what it's called. I cannot for the life of me right now remember what it's called. Um, uh, I'm just going to Google it real quick. Um, let's see. Knit and Crochet Craft. Festivals.net. Oh, yes. So it's the Crochet Guild of America. Um, they're having their annual conference in Manchester this year. And so, um, they are, that is on, the conference is on. 
on, uh, it's July 10th to 13th in Manchester, New Hampshire, you can see here. Um, and, um, and they're the only, they say they are the only exclusive, exclusive crochet conference in the country, whether you're just starting out in crochet or have had years of experience, it's truly a crochet holiday. So it's the 10th to the 13th, but the, um, but the marketplace is open, um, Saturday, Sunday, which is the 12th and the 13th. So that's going to be, um, that's going to be what it is. Yeah, it's the, um, exhibitor kit. I mean, I'll have to double check, but yeah, I'm going to be working that. So if you're a crocheter and you're going to that show, I'll be there along with one of my friends. So, um. In other news, because other stuff has happened, Kevin and I have decided on our venue, and I have found my wedding dress. So I just need to go and get it fitted and sized because it didn't quite fit in a few places. It actually almost, almost actually fit. It was just a little tight, um, like in the waist and the hips. Um, so I, she, it needs to be let out just a smidge, and there's a few other things that need to be done to it just to make it fit perfect, you know, um, but so, but I'm waiting until I have like my shoes and everything so that when I go, I'll be wearing everything I'll be wearing on the day so that we know how it fits, you know, um, so that like she can hem it to like the shoe height and all that jazz. So, um, so yeah, it's good. Um, I'm going to be wearing my mom's veil because, um, we pulled that out and I tried it on. It actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to be doing that. So, um, yeah, it's been, <laughs> it's been an interesting couple of weeks. Um, got a lot of decisions made for the wedding. Um, we pretty much have our finalized guest count, give or take a couple of people. Um, we're not sure if a couple of people want a plus one or not. So, you know, we're, we're figuring that out. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I think that's it. Um, I might try to adjust the lighting a little bit in post, but I'm not great on the editing thing, but we'll see how it turns out. But anyways, thank you for watching. Like, subscribes, comments are all appreciated. They're not necessary, but I love talking to you folks. I love having a back and forth. If you have commented on the podcast on YouTube or on Ravelry and I have not gotten back to you, that's because I'm a horrible person. <laughs> And I'm really bad at responding to people. So it's not you, it's me. But I love reading your comments, even if I don't get a chance to respond to them because of work or life or whatever. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!